The pursuit of land and water speed records has attracted daredevils ever since the invention of the internal combustion engine. The British Campbell family is perhaps the most famous name in these circles, with father Malcolm and son Donald holding more than 20 land and water speed titles between them. Somebody else's father might have been a doctor or a dentist or an accountant or a school teacher. My father was a record breaker. Didn't strike me as being particularly odd, to be quite honest. We had trophies at home uh, that my mum had kept. But my mum never really chatted much about who my grandfather was or who her brother was. And I think she wanted to keep her sons away from it just a little bit in case we caught the bug as well. Gina and Don's grandfather, Sir Malcolm Campbell, broke the world land speed record nine times between 1925 and 1934. His first two records were set in a sleek aero engine sunbeam car, but it was his specially commissioned Bluebird machines which would capture the world's imagination. What they were doing before the war to, to, to knock on the door of 250, 270, 280 miles an hour in 1930s. They didn't have a problem with power, they had a problem with suspension and tyres. They were brave men and you know that, that's quite a legacy. My father revered his father. I mean he was like a hallowed lord. And I think my father would never have got into record breaking himself, I'm sure, if his father hadn't. That legacy would shape the life of Malcolm's son, Donald. Inspired to follow in his father's footsteps, he introduced Bluebird to a new generation, tirelessly pursuing both land and water speed records, famously competing both feats in 1964, an achievement which remains unbeaten. Campbell is on a track on which no man should have dared to run. Only confidence in his machine and his crew would send him down that measured mile to success or eternity. That adrenaline of beating a record and knowing that in four months' time you're going to Bonneville or you're going to Australia to, or to Lake Eyre somewhere to knock on the door and see if you can get 350, 400. Can you get both land and water in the same year? Was he driven? Yes, he was driven because he had to be. And, you know, if you say you're going to do a record, you have to go and do a record. You can't just say, mm, you know what, I think I've changed my mind. I want to change my job. He had to get on with it. In his pursuit of ever more records, Donald Campbell would pay the ultimate price, killed while attempting a new water speed record in 1967. 50 years on, family and fans gathered at historic Shelsley Walsh, scene of his father's pre-war hill climb exploits to celebrate the family's successes. My grandfather was an absolute pioneer in his day to show British engineering at its best as well. So to come to events here at Shelsey Walsh and talk about our family achievements, bring it to a new generation, really is very important. But the family isn't content simply reliving the memories of yesteryear. Gina set women's water speed records in the 1980s. Don has set records in both electric and steam-powered vehicles, with son Joe also becoming involved in recent years. I had a personal desire to see electric cars on our roads. I still do. And taking it forward, we broke the record for the UK and held it for 14 years or so. And I'd still like to try and get that back perhaps one day and then go on for a world record. And I was very fortunate to be invited to join the world record attempt for a steam car. And uh, what a fantastic opportunity that was and what a fantastic project. I was so lucky to be involved with that. The Campbell name continues to inspire British speed enthusiasts. And with trials set for later this year, the Bloodhound project is the latest world land speed record attempt. But while the legacy lives on, the days of the individual Mavericks are over. Budgets have gone through the roof, and it's now not in the realms of an individual anymore. You've got to have a business behind it. You've got to have big sponsorship. And you look at Bloodhound now, I mean, they need tens of millions of pounds to survive and keep going. So it's taking it away from the individuals and it's now a business proposition rather than a, a private individual's task.